back to Bird Box Podcast. This is our June edition. Um, really good to see you joining us again and welcome to any new viewers. My name's John, otherwise known as Mr B's Yarn. And I'm Claire, I'm known as Clary B on Ravelry and I am Bush Street UK on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm Becky and I am Bexy Norms on Instagram. Hi there. <laughs> So in this episode we're going to look back over the month of May, tell you a bit about some of the things we've been up to, including some interesting meets and collaborations yeah. as well. It's been a really, a bit really about. yarny month. Very yarny, full of birthdays, lots of stressful at work. Yeah. Uh, these oh, two yeah, are going to talk you through stressful. loads of their uh, whips and things that they've got coming up and then I'm going to take you through a little bit about some of the colourways that we've got in the shop and talk about what's coming up in the month ahead. So. Sorry, Stella keeps tapping my leg. <laughs> right, I can't it ignore you. Her. No, not so, um, May saw um, Yarn Shop Day. It did. That was and good fun. And we had a board, didn't we? Did. we? It was we, really lovely. We went to our favourite knitting shop, Holton at Universe, which is just outside of Bristol. See our lovely friend Kim. And um, Amy was there with her trunk show. Um, and oh, we just met loads of people, oh, didn't it we? So it was nice. great. Our it friend was Kate so was nice. there, and then we um, met Tracy Arnold. Tracy Arnold came from and Nora Pamela George. With, Rex. Yeah, with Pam. <laughs> and just and loads just of Kate. people. And, oh, and gorgeous Roz, who called yeah. me a celebrity. I love that. <laughs> and Roz. And I was dog sitting. He was dog sitting. Roz yeah. and Amy were wearing their dungarees, so I went out and bought some because <laughs> they look so cute. Dungaree and me. Yeah, I did. Yeah, have we, we just had a great time, didn't we? It was really fun. Oh, we didn't want to leave. It was really good fun. We took some very funny photos, didn't we? We took photos. What were they did. called? The Yetis? I can't remember. That was like, funny. I have no idea. You'll see if them I can on find Amy's a podcast. picture, I'll have to put it on. <laughs> So I'd rather not. No? <laughs> it wasn't very flattering. <laughs> funny though. Funny. Yeah, it was oh, really wow. nice. I bought a couple of things, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, and uh, you met Knitting Royalty. <gasps> you did? Do you know what? I still can't believe it. I met Ohi. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. How does it work? I know, it was so lovely and she was so lovely, but we'll talk about that a bit And Helen thoughts. Stewart. Helen Stewart, we saw. Deb, Tink Hickman, oh, Little Bobbins, and yeah, it was lovely. I think you're going to have to go through some of that when you're talking about what you've been up to, yeah? We shall. <laughs> we'll get carried away now. Are you getting bored of us, John? Well, yeah, yeah, I've got nothing like... to say about this bit. <laughs> so. Talking knitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of us in education, we've just been doing assessments and yeah. tests all the way through the month of May, so kind of glad to see the back of May, actually. Oh, yeah. And he just was, get to the bank holiday. He was on his knees on Friday, literally, like... Yeah. Ugh. Tough yeah. month, but yeah. bank holiday's here. Yeah. Yeah. We've got loads of Week birthdays off. going on, and um, yeah, looking yeah. forward to the month ahead. Okay, nice. well, I think I'm going to leave you to it because you've got a lot yeah. to talk about. Go on, off you go. You're and I'll come back in us. a bit. Off you go. <laughs> I've had enough already. I'm talking about knitting, for goodness sake. See you. <laughs> oh, look, we're all kind of coordinated. So yeah. I'm going to my phone. Right. Okay, so um, are we going to start with the giveaway? Yeah, we'll do the giveaway. So last month, um, lovely Jessie Marie Makes offered one of you lucky viewers entry into her sock club, which is a six month sock club harry potter harry themed. potter themed one sock a month from june the first and so you just had to leave just a little comment about your favorite character and um we're gonna we put them in, in the pot now <laughs> <laughs> give it a whiz give it a whiz and uh here we go then so here's one and it is michelle jacques, jacques. <laughs> Michelle Jacks, we'll, we'll put it up on the screen because my handwriting's on that. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's focusing. I can't see the viewfinder on the camera. So well done, Michelle. You've won. Um, if you direct message either one of us on Instagram, so at Bexie or John's, Mons, yeah, or Mr. Bijan, or at Bird Street UK with your name, or your Ravelry name, that's important, and then I'll get that information to Jessie Marie and she will send you your patterns. And well if you uh, hang on for the end, we've got another we've giveaway. We've got another giveaway. Exciting. It is really exciting. Right then, so, I feel like I've not done loads of knitting Both this month. I sort of have and I haven't. Um, I was really tired with work, but I've been sort of quite monogamous on a couple of patterns. So. But when you say things like, oh, I haven't done much, yeah, but for me, probably only made I six mean, pairs of socks. No, 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 no. I've only got three FOs for the whole month, which is not like me. It's not like me. No. But, you know. 
that's more like me. But no, no, even I've been tired. Um, yeah, I still writing get reports, a lot of pain. Things. So I haven't been knitting very much, I'm afraid. But I, I, I want my brain. I want to knit things, and I keep downloading patterns and <laughs> buying yeah, yarn. You'll get there. And, uh, yeah, it's frustrating. Right, so you kick off then. So, here we go then. So I'll do this one first. This is like a little one. Oh, so cute. so it, it wouldn't be our podcast like me knitting a flax. So I knit another flax light, lovely pattern by Tin Can Knit, oh, and you know I'm so quite cute. um, it's my habit to fiddle with the pattern. So this time I did the garter panel on the sleeve, oh. but I did short sleeves because this is for a baby that's hopefully going to be born in the next couple of days. Um, so I thought you know, summer autumn it's going to yeah. need to be short sleeved. Mm -hmm. um, drops baby merino oh, standard so this jumper probably cost me about three pounds to make <laughs> so what's not to love but it feels lovely um, it feels lovely it gives stitch you definition. such a gorgeous stitch definition which lovely. i will talk about a bit more later um and i literally Blocks get that in a couple nicely. of days it's teeny tiny oh, um so cute i had a day off work on friday for a little procedure on my hip so i was just knitting all day so yeah just whipped through that Love so it. really happy that one. I don't know okay. whether the baby's going to be a boy or a girl, but I thought that was quite a good yeah, colour. Perfect. I think it's called sea glass. I'm yeah, yeah, to say, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it is. I've got so that. I thought that was perfect. Sort of, it'd be really sweet on a little you girl. You could wear that. So, uh, little boy could wear that with dungarees, and yeah. then a little girl could wear that with a a floral skirt yeah, or something. Yeah, I mean, denim just dress. Yeah, or anything. It's just really sweet little colour. I think gorgeous. I love, that. I love it. There we go. I've got another one. So this one, oh my goodness. Right, the, these socks I picked up and did not put them down until oh, they were finished. They because so great. I was looking forward to this pattern. I was waiting for it to come out and the second it came out, I started it. So these are the two colour socks by Hohe. Look at that. And I knit them. I seem to be knitting lately in just commercial solid colour yarn, which is very <gasps> unlikely. Very but, dare you. Um, yeah, sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so these are knit out of um, uh, Coop Knit Socks, yeah? In the Zenon colourway, which oh, that pink really, really is that, right? Really, really glows. <laughs> and the grey is the West Yorkshire Spinner's Bow Peep 4 ply. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, Until it's real wool. It's and the lovely. pattern is just fab. It's so cute. And I've already like got loads of plans for this pattern because I think you could you could mix the order that you do the pattern. So you've basically you've got the stripes and you've got this lovely lace mm. panel which I'm already thinking I could do a whole sock in mm. that lace that would be really nice then this panel is basically the Hermione's everyday pattern mm. and then just plain on the toes mm. but I yeah I just feel like you could play with the order oh, yeah you could do a whole stripey sock you could do a whole yeah, yeah. lace sock it'd yeah. be it's really fun to play with yeah. I've already got um I've got my mindset on a like a peachy pale colour pair mm, but I had to do grey and grey and neon Gorgeous. pink first that was just yeah and I, I, I enjoyed doing like the opposite colours is it fraternal so I might yeah what they call it? yeah so I might do the next pair exactly the same I don't know but there will definitely be more of these on the card they are so cute Loved I love them. them yeah I love those and love you did do them. them really quickly yeah I just couldn't put them down yeah. I kind it was one of those projects where you're like I want to knit on it, but I don't want them to be finished. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Yeah, I know. I love projects <laughs> like that. And you're like, oh, I don't want to finish. Oh. So, I haven't finished any knitting. Lots of pain, I'm afraid. But stupid hands. But I can still sew. So, I think oh, it's so pretty. Myself, a top. I have a gorgeous rifle paper co floral fabric by Cotton and Steel. I bought this particular rayon from Guthrie and Garni. And, um,. And it, it arrived in the post. I got it out of the post box at quarter to four in the afternoon and I was just pressing it as John came home from work. <laughs> and oh, then, I want one. So my son is 30 tomorrow and his fiance was 30 yesterday and they had a bit of a party on Saturday night. So I wore it there and I felt very oh, nice in it. It's it a nice ray on. It does crease up a little bit, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, you made. It. Is this the same pattern you made before? Yeah, and you gave it to me and didn't put me in and gave yeah, it to Sarah. Yeah, you gave it to Sarah. Yeah, so this is the silk cami top. And um, <laughs> I'm short bodied, so I always need to adjust straps on yeah. everything. But I've, I've got narrow back, but I've got Big larger boobies. boobies or boohies, <laughs> as Freya says. Um, and so I never, I, I'm not very good at adjusting patterns. So this time, 
I did shorter body, I did shorter straps, and so it actually goes around me a bit better. A little bit, it's a little bit big, more full around the tummy and that. Yeah, but, but that's quite nice. I don't mind that. Um, I want one. I want one. I want to learn how to adjust patterns properly. So um, Saturday, I'm off to a sewing workshop, um, and I'm making a pinafore dress, and it, they're going to show you how to adjust patterns. Cool. So I'm really excited. So, um, yeah. I've got some more fabric. But we'll talk about that. Talk about acquisitions. acquisitions. Right then. So I've got one more finished object, and this is probably why I've not done a lot of knitting on anything else, mm. because I got really into this. So this is my, and the name's gone already, Emea Shawl by Amber O'Brien. I just love her shawl patterns, and we'll talk a bit more about some of those later on, I think. Um, so I think I was just past this lace section mm. when I last podcast oh my goodness oh, i'm sorry my phone keeps going off it is oh it's absolutely beautiful finished it's huge it's just impossible to get the whole thing in but it um i used a sock grade um sorry a shawl blank a gradient shawl blank by mint b so you'll see it starts with this dark blue it smells lush it smells isn't it? um and then progresses down to this oh like lovely the gradient. aqua green Stunning. it's lovely it's and then it's striped with just a grey drops baby merino and then the lace is done in P knickers by Amy Stranded Directs. The lace P is absolutely knickers. gorgeous it and it's got this lovely little Pico bind off. And it's glittery. Yeah. Now I found last time I knit one of her patterns it felt like it dragged a little yeah. bit yeah. but this one just didn't. I just couldn't stop and actually. It's going side to side so it doesn't have Yeah so the rows aren't massively long. long. Yeah. Um, the, the you know the stripes were just like vanilla knitting really yeah, weren't yeah, a lot yeah. to remember and the lace it's got was colour changes was as well lovely nice. it really kept kept yeah. your interest and what was good was you could just keep going on the lace basically until you oh, ran out of yarn yeah. or it was your desired yeah, size up. or whatever yeah so that Love was quite it. nice oh it's so um, pretty and now obviously it's too warm to wear things <laughs> so um this will be put in my pile of things for the winter and when it comes mm. to sort of October time I'll be able to you'll be living in have a whole Lovely. New what is knitted wardrobe is rapture. Oh, it is lush, isn't it? Yeah, gorgeous. So yes, I would highly recommend that pattern. It's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. It's, it's a funny shape. It's like a, it's like a crescent that goes yeah. into a triangle. It's, yeah, yeah. But it's lovely. It goes around. Yeah, nicely. you can just you can do loads of things with it. Yeah. So I'm really chuffed with that. Yeah. Very nice. You've got, this is really funny, but my phone just went off twice for the text. No, it's Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, we're podcasting. podcasting. <laughs> He, he lives in Cardiff. He's not he's even at work. And he's he's not even here. He's <laughs> Honestly, Daniel. What's that about? Right then. Yeah, well so, done, you. Yeah. that's it yeah, for whips? Yeah, I haven't got any... No, not whips. No, well, finished okay. objects. Although, I can show these. Yeah. And I, I do need to make apologies, because I started these charity bags, and I said I was going to put them up, and, yeah, I just haven't been able to. So, I'm just going to show you what I've done so far. So, we have... The large one that you'll probably remember with the clouds inside. They've now got Clara buttons on. They have. The Clara buttons arrived. And here they are from Nikki, Clara Pegatty. She made some gorgeous buttons to go on them because it's her weaving and I didn't want to take all the credit. So That one's mine. That so. one's Becky's, I'm afraid. It's already <laughs> been nabbed with the pencils. That one hasn't got a handle on it. <laughs> I think I ended up putting, no, there's no label on it either, so oh, there you go. I have to have it. I have to have it. <laughs> Get all the shoddy. <laughs> yeah, she gets all the rubbish. <laughs> this is a gorgeous one with a little flower on, with the birdies inside, um, and a little handle. Very sweet. And Thank I did you. another one of those, but this one hasn't oh. got its poppers yet, and it hasn't got its bottom. Oh, that fabric's cool. Yeah, and it's like sort of sewing pattern, kind of vintagey. I don't really know what it is, like patchwork. Yeah, I know it is, like, pattern. yeah. With a little handle, cool. and then I've done this one, the gorgeous stripy one, That's which I cool. love, with a kind of spotty raindrop kind of effect. I think this one might have the label inside. <laughs> You're a bit random with it. I don't know what was going oh, on with my brain. Cute. Kate has got a bit of an eye on this one, I think. Oh. But um, you know, see, she went to Dublin this week, so she might not have any money left. <laughs> um, spotty fabric, little handles, very very cute. And I love this one. Oh. It's brown weaving, it's darker on the back. And then it's got like an orange, burnt orange tie dye kind of fabric inside. So those are those. I've got one more to make, 
buttons to sew on, poppers to put on, and then they might actually go out in the shop. And well, they might oh, yeah. probably go on Instagram, I expect. But these will be for sale, and the profits will go to Children's Hospice Southwest, who do a fabulous job with lots of children, but with our nephews as well. So we, yeah, we just well, want to appreciate everything they do. They're twice the work of everybody else. Well, they are say. twice the work of everybody else. I wouldn't want to look after them. <laughs> So right then, my so finished object. Whips. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm doing my favourite one first. Now this is the one living in my Bird Street UK biscuit bag, um, with oh, my cute little gingerbread man. Yeah. That, um, Claire's friend Rach from Cat and Sparrow UK gave us. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to go on my biscuit yeah, bag. And um, this is the one I forgot last month. So this is my herbarium sweater, which was inspired by lovely um, Hannah, tells from Narnia, who was wearing hers yesterday. It made me just want to knit on it. Oh, um, so, so here it is. It's, again, Drops Baby Merino. I just think, why not? It's so cheap. It's now 180 of all. I just ordered some more. So, crazy, crazy, crazy. see the pattern on the front, the lace pattern? Let me find a picture of it in a minute. For you. It is. Gorgeous. So I absolutely colour. love this because I love the shape of it. It's sort of got a slightly, sorry, slightly <laughs> back wingy sleeve. Lovely. Really delicate lace on the front, so I thought it'd be quite good for sort of a, a summer. Yeah, yeah. Sort of lighter jumper. So yeah. I've um, separated for the sleeves. Beautiful colour. So it's bottom up. Um, so I'm just doing the back, working on the back at the moment. Um, the front was just lovely. It's a really simple lace pattern. It, I've virtually been using this, like my vanilla mm. knitting. It's completely stocking it on the back, mm. which makes that really easy. Yeah, yeah, and the front, there's only two pattern rows, which are really easy to remember. Goodness. You'll see there, there's sort of shaped, so it goes out sort of for the back wing sleeves, and then yep. you, you um, knit the back, shape the shoulders, yep. knit the front, shape the shoulders, right. and then join it, and then, then do the, yeah, and then do okay. the, um, the sleeves. The neckline, like the neckline's just oh, quite just rounded, just yeah, but sort of quite wide, yeah. And, and the sleeves are aren't very long, something strappy underneath would look nice, yeah. Yeah, I'm nice. kind of figuring it might be a similar shape to this one, maybe yeah, yeah. slightly less back. Yeah, it. that one's. A I want to knit one like this. I know, I love Somebody it. Somebody asked me if I did knit it the other it's day, so I, nice. I was tempted to say, yeah. I went shopping with mum the other week to buy her a new top. We found this one and I thought, oh, I'd love that one, but I'll let my mum buy it. Mom and she came home. home and I was like, oh, I really love that. I'm gutted mum got it. And then she didn't like it. So I went, oh, how she got it. it. I did buy it, to be I fair. know, but yeah. <laughs> she just give it to me. Yes, so that's my herbarium. I'm hoping by the end of the year, <clears throat> this will be finished. I want to get wearing it before it the weather gets really, too hot. It's really lovely. I and I love definitely, I'm definitely envisaging making more yeah in fact i almost ordered more yarn the other night i was like no don't be stupid finish one before by <laughs> uh, so yeah that's that one well i kind of practically knit nothing at all and i still ordered more yarn for yeah. <laughs> like a cloud last night <laughs> oh, i love like a cloud in fact the pattern on that reminds me of like a cloud uh, yeah it is a bit so i have done a little bit but only a little bit just oh, tell them about the finished object that we haven't got here. So, I Becky made some socks for Freya, her friend's little girl, and um, she's her her best friend Sarah is kind of like our sister. She's part of our family, and so Freya's like our niece, really. Yeah. Um, and so Becky had made us some socks, and I thought oh, I've got loads of leftover yarn. Well, you make a pair. Which of she socks. calls hop hop. So hop. And um, so I had some um, MCN um, flamingo, flamingo legs from Stranded. So I made her some tube socks. And she loves them. Well, the second I gave them to her, she whipped her shoes and socks off, put them on. She's like, oh, my Mingo hocks. So she's got Mingo hocks. And, and she, she had to wear them to bed. to bed. Then she woke up the next morning. She's like, look, my Mingo hocks. And now she and yesterday she was wearing them with pyjamas and sandals. Oh. She's Dying. so classy, she really is. <laughs> so yeah, I do have, have that, yeah, I did finish those. She's requested pink hocks now. Pink hocks, I got loads of pink. So yeah. I, I did 44 pink. stitches. Oh, is that what you did? I yeah. did 52 on a rainbow ones and I did think they were slightly too big. 44 stitches and I just nip as long as I thought. Yeah. And then um, takes about three seconds flat. And it's really, really quick. Good and they were lovely to knit. They'll um, fit her for ages. So yeah, she will get more hocks. <laughs> so funny. So I'm on... This was a really bad choice, okay? So I'm knitting my starting point out of leftovers, basically. So it's out of stash, but it's all stuff that had been started on. 
So I've got to this stage now, mm -hmm. in this section, and I, I panicked a bit and thought maybe I won't have enough to do this sort of twisted rib section. And so I found two other colours which were similar, or this other colour, so it's Coop Knits. I couldn't tell you what mm. name it was, and some um, drops of mohair silk. And so I decided, they go together, I'm going to do the twisted rib like that, but try doing twisted rib with two skeins. Yeah. Holding two. Holding a double. What was wrong with, with mohair? Me? With mohair. What's wrong with me? And I've got painful hands. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, slightly regretting that, but actually... It's lovely. And look at the industrial kingfisher uh, with my hair. I need to, I, I've got to do faded So paint. I think I I've to. done basically from the blue, look, that grey up to there. That's all I've done since. Well, that's enough. Podcast. But it is growing. Are you doing all one side and then all the other? No. No, you're doing one at a time. Yeah, doing yeah I'm doing time. each pattern. That's good. Repeat. So I have got the other half in there. So you must be sort of. A good chunk into it now. I know yeah, it's big. But now when but... you look at, <laughs> you look at the next clue and the next clue, you just think, oh, you won't be able to wear it for a couple of months because well, it's no. big and heavy. It so it'd be nice. Heavy. It's a yeah. nice ongoing project. Isn't it, it? It, it, when I sit down to knit on it, I just think, oh, I do love it. Um, yeah, it's a bit yeah. fiddly at the moment, and it's my thumbs are the most painful. So twisting and it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> But I want to knit all the things. <laughs> I know. I feel like all the rest of my rips are a bit boring now, but I'm not, I'm not a massive knitting mojo. Yeah, it doesn't look boring to me. These, oh, well, no, the rips. yarn's not boring, no. these, but they are only vanilla stock, <sighs> socks. I started these as Clark socks, mm. and then I love that pattern, and mm. I love this yarn, and mm. they just didn't go together. You no, couldn't disrupts. see the pattern on the yeah. yarn, and it disrupted the, the yeah, striping yeah, yeah. on the yarn. Yeah. And I just took there, so I unravelled it. So these are just going to be for Sarah's birthday, which is in a few weeks' time. She loves my knitted socks, so I just thought I'd make her some vanilla love socks. Them. And love then I them. thought Freya will probably get a little pair of matching ones because she'd love that. Yeah, this she is would. Um, Rainbow Riot on Navy by Sophie from Pixie Yarn. I love it on Navy. And um, I'm going to use this pink on the heels and toes, which I think is Life in Plastic by Ethan. It is. Yeah. From my what fade. Yeah, I just thought there's no actual pink in that yarn, but I just thought it. Yeah, it went nicely. Looks fine. So yeah, go, so they're kind of just they're just ticking along. I just pick up and do a couple yeah. of frames every now and again. Yeah, I still haven't finished my twisted lemon socks. I love them, but again, not. Yeah. What have you got there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're stuck on that yarn. Oh, oh, got it stuck. Eek! Any stitch marker comes. disaster. Split ring stitch markers, never good. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I got this ages ago. I got a a mini, like a surprise mini club from Rainbow Cloud Shop, I think it was. And the theme was a galaxy <laughs> far, far away. So I just got a little stormtrooper. That is cool. A little stormtrooper. But, well, our nephews keeper, but it's a bit, little bit heavy, so I just yeah. use it on the bag instead. Yeah, my nephews would appreciate that. So yes. my other work in progress. I think I probably I had started it last time. I yes, I think yeah, I've probably done about six rows. So, <laughs> da da, radiate there. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. I can't knit it at the moment. <laughs> Boring. So in my bag that Claire wove for me, yeah, it's got all fluffy. Oh, it's gone really fluffy. It's, it's really hair. soft now. I love this one because it's really good to chuck in your bag because it's nice and soft. I love it. These I just cast on one day when the weather was quite hot and sunny and. It was a bit hot to knit anything else, and I was a bit, I don't know, it was a bit fidgety in the garden. I couldn't really stick to any one project, so I just cast on. This is, um, is it Blue Skies and Blossoms, I think, by Fine Fish Yarns. Again, left over from my What the Fade. I had about 40 grams of each colour left, so I was just using it for different things. So I just thought I'd cast on a little pair of shorty socks, and they'll either go in my collection or just sit in a present pile, I think. I'm starting to try and think about mm. Christmas presents. Oh, don't, don't. <gasps> Gosh, this was a good time of year so though because um, because you know you can't necessarily knit loads of things to wear, can you? It was ages till we get to wear anything. So why not? yeah, that's what I keep thinking about. Some of my things actually, it won't matter. Yeah, because I don't. I'm well. not going to be wearing no. them even if I finish them now. Maybe if I'm feeling a bit better later on in the year, then there's things I can pick up again. But yeah, I can't think about Christmas. Sorry, my son's 30 tomorrow, and then my dad's 71 the day after. 
May is daughter in law 30 yesterday. May is stupid for a birthday. John 48 last Who week. Cares? Mum 70. Come on, we think more is crazy. Thankfully, it's like one birthday in June. Oh, goodness, that. No, yeah. it's probably more than that, but. So the know. rest of mine is like dream knitting, so yeah. you carry on. Well, my last whip, I haven't really done a lot on since last time. It's the Rita Socks by Danny, Little Bobbins. Um, so I'm knitting these held double with mohair, so they're like bed socks. Oh. I love the way they look, I love the pattern. It is a little bit tough on the hands, I find, mm. holding it double. Mm. And I don't know, I think, do you know what I think's holding me back with this mm. project? Is the fact that I know I'm gonna have to do a heel flap and gusset uh, because it's two strands. Uh, I can't pick up for an athletic no. heel. No. And it's really putting me off. I just can't uh, be bothered anymore uh, to do heel flap and gusset. No. But I'm just gonna sort of, I'll tick along on them for a bit, pick them up, do a repeat mm. every now and again, and then yeah. eventually I might just get a little mm, you'll have a little bit of mojo burst of mojo and you will they the pattern is so lovely it's so pretty i'm always amazed at how well pattern shows through when you're holding mohair because you think yeah it's so fuzzy you wouldn't see the pattern but it really does and i like show. how it sort of really softens the color yeah. it's um beautiful oops the blue is larimar by soxia and the mohair is just a uh, wendy air mm -hmm. just in a cream it's nothing fancy yeah um, what I might do is cast the second one on so they're getting both to the same yeah, point, yeah. do a bit of that and then do both heels at once yeah. and be done with it. <laughs> we'll get mum to do the heels. <laughs> <laughs> mum oh, doesn't, bring mum's doesn't like it. Oh, yeah. Mum doesn't like doing heels and socks very much really. So. Oh, that's oh, yeah. strange. I don't, I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> we need to teach her to do afterthought heels. I think she'll like it. <clears throat> she will do. So are we on to... Stash. Stash. Or dream knitting, if we do that after. Whichever way, well mine's kind of both, mine kind of over Okay, so. well I got a bit of dream knitting and I did treat myself, oh this is stash as well. I've got a Tudor rose this bag, which is very cute. It's nice. Yeah. The colour. Yeah, it's lovely. I just fancied that. Do you know what, I, I'm drawn to mustard but I can't wear mustard. No, I, I can't either. I like to buy mustard things. Yeah, <laughs> a bit like that. So I've got a bit of dream knitting. So this pattern caught my eye. Oh, that's on my dream knitting as well. Lavetta. And that is another, another umbra umbra umbra. Umbra. Yeah. Look at that. It's a really distinctive um, style hers. Yeah, two colours. Stripey and then lace. Love it. I do. I love how she styles. I think I talked. Yeah, the style. She look, styles. That looks really cool. Shawl's really nice. On the I pattern. love how she's got that tied in then in a yeah, knot. Yeah, in a knot. That's cute, isn't it? And um, so I've I bought this is the fingering weight yeah. version, Lavetta, and she's got another one called Lavella, which is the DK weight version. Yeah. And so. My niece, our niece, went on her honeymoon to Amsterdam, I think I said before, bought me this lovely Malabrigo yarn. It's called Cielo e Tierra, which I, well, it does mean heaven and earth, because I looked ah. it up. I was going to say I'm just smart like that, but I'm not really. <laughs> um, so I, I got this lovely yarn, it's a singles, I really want to use it, so I'm just going to use a skein of bear yarn mm -hmm. to do that. Did you notice there's two colours, but one of the colours is more than one skein? Yes. Because I was, I... I was like, I had my heart set on what I was going to do it in, and then I realised I didn't have enough. Right, I've worked okay. out something else. Well, that's why I thought if I went for the natural one, then I've got more of those than yeah. I've got other yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. And it looks nice for the natural one. Yeah. But then I have, oh, yes, I have, because I want to download Lavella, which is the DK one. And you've got a DK. And Ooh. so I've got, so this is a finished object. <laughs> oh, yeah. I spun some yarn. This is my Dolly Mixture by Spin City UK. The sparkles in this are so cool. They're blue. Oh, and, um, iridescent. It's got so many different fibres in this. It's not soft. It's a bit, Fine, but it's not rough. It's not, it's a bit crunchy. Because you know me, I'm a bit princessy mm. with this sort of thing. So I've got two skeins of Wensley Dell. Give some my nails. Your West Yorkshire Spinners, <laughs> please. I've got two skeins of this. So I did think I'm going to do look, the look, It gives me my nails, I love oh, it. It's <laughs> God, I, I'm so pleased with that, and it's quite a consistent spin. I'm really pleased with yeah. it. And it was yeah, really enjoyable. Yeah, she says no in what she's yeah, yeah. about. <laughs> so, yeah, there's my... So they'll go together. They'll be lovely. And they will be Lovella. But I will have to buy and download that pattern. So that's... Worth it. Her time. patterns are lovely. Oh, and they're not expensive. So, funnily enough, my future plans are the same pattern. Yay! Um, 
So, I kind of do stash at the same time, really. So, um, obviously, we talked earlier about yarn shop day. So, we went down to um, Alternate Universe, and Amy was there with her trunk show. So, I bought two skeins of Amy's yarn. First of all, I bought on her Paradise base, which is MCM, which is one of my favourite bases. I think her MCM is one of the nicest I've used. It's really plump. It almost looks DK. Yeah, it does. This is called Glissade, and it's just a really beautiful pale blue with some tiny Very speckles. Soft. Of sort of purple blue mm. really gorgeous pink mm. just really spoke to me i like walked in gave amy a hug saw it over her shoulder grabbed it <laughs> boom done pushed amy out of the way <laughs> <laughs> just loved it straight away so that was lovely and then this one's an old favorite really yeah, it's on resist. her sanctuary base which is actually um exclusive to kim it's um, BFL Bamboo, so you have heard me talk about that before. Um, really like it as a base, it's lovely. Um, BFL's growing on me. Yeah, and good. It's, and it's not growing on you, is it? No, not really. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. It's really funny. Um, but I've got I, sensitive hands. Yeah, but so have I. I'm a bit princessy. But yeah, but I mean, like, pain wise. Oh, I don't know, I don't oh, know what it is. Think, think. Mm. But yeah. So, it's but it's nougat, and I absolutely love nougat. I made, I had it before on Paradise, and I made my girl from the grocery store in it. Mm. But I didn't ever really wear it because mm. it's not really big enough mm. for me. It's too, it's just. Um, oh, you might have to give it to me. Yeah, you can have it. You can have it. Um, so I kind of felt like I needed another skein yes. of. I feel like you needed it. Nougat. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's gorgeous. Oh, I love it. It's just, it's such a pretty colour because it's peachy and pretty. So, I've got it. But then it's it. got these. Pops. It's so at, different on the different bases. Think, yeah, it is actually so different on that base than it is on. And actually, it's got a sort of a browny <gasps> tone mm. in there, which is not me at all. But I really like it in context. It. it really, I it really it. works because it just is new guys, and it? it's sort of caramelly, sweet, yeah. sweetie, mm, yum. So anyway, Glissade is then going to go with this. <gasps> I'm slowly becoming an Olan addict. Oh, Claire got me I this. Her at, um, oh. Yeah, Claire bought this from. Is her name Jess? Yeah. yeah. Claire got lovely. this from Jess at the Makers Market at the Country House re Retreat. I didn't um, go to the retreat, sadly. I gave her a list of all the colours. I went through the Olan website. I was like, right, I'm at work. They're going. They're going to have to buy me some yarn because. <laughs> otherwise it's really, be really stroppy <laughs> really stroppy so i sent them with a list of all the olan colors i liked and this was the only one that's that the only one she list. had but i love it i absolutely love it it's called vessel to be fair i could have picked up any one of them off the table well, and, and you would have loved yeah, it yeah and also you, you would have probably picked this yeah, would, yeah exactly we both said there's like turquoise and anyway. pink it is absolutely like, scrummy it's totally totally me and the, the the way i don't know what it is about olan it's know. really distinctive yeah, i don't know how it's sort of it. colors maybe you wouldn't put together oh sort of quite clashy but just the way she does it is just gorgeous so just this one <laughs> and this one <laughs> along with just you know just for a change some drops baby marina yeah. i think are going to be my labetta so i think i'm going to stripe those two mm. and then that one's going to be the lace because mm. i like the pale lace in the pattern yeah lovely so <gasps> i think i think Gorge. that's going to be soon love it love it well so well um, so Becky showed her stranded first, so I'm going to go with mine too. And Becky loves like Nuga. I love Industrial Kingfisher, and I think this is probably about the fifth one I've bought now. I have a sweater, and it's in my starting point, and I'm pretty sure it's in something else. And I just I don't know. It's just gorgeous. See now I love the brown pops. Yeah. And the blue and the murkiness of it. That's just. That's what I love. <laughs> you, Dark and murky. You don't sell these things. Well, you know. Yeah, but autumnal is the word. Like the Not murky. murky. <laughs> autumnal. But I went in and saw Amy and she was sweating. So lovely. And I was like, oh, I'm so lovely. Yeah. But I went in and saw Amy and she was so lovely. And everybody was lovely there. It was a lovely day. Yeah, and lovely. I looked over her shoulder and her socks were hung up along a beam. The sock rainbow. With a sock rainbow. And this, yesterday's bouquet, the socks just looked yeah, the way it knit so up was surprising. Gorgeous. It? Oh, it really did look lovely. So I had to buy. Look at the green. Again, so that's quite yesterday. an unexpected colour combination. It's those sort of burgundy yeah. bits in it, but lime Blue green and, and then lime green and pink and oh, really pretty. Scrummy. So those were my stranded purchases. And then I only bought two at the Maker's Retreat because I bought this. And. I got it signed. How oh, he is so lovely. 
she's so lovely. She was so friendly. She, we walked in through the door and she's like, hello, lovely to see you. And she was just so friendly oh. and so, yeah, so sweet. So yeah, had Stella. <laughs> Sorry. The postman's on his way. Um, so yeah, got the interpretations book. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All <laughs> the postman's there. The postman's at the door watching this podcast. Yes, how embarrassing. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, love that cardigan. It might be our wall delivery, actually. <laughs> um, and there's another one I love. Separate ways. I like that. I like that a lot. Look at that one. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. That's what is it I love in here? That's some gorgeous ones. They're absolutely gorgeous. But yes, yeah, so that's while um, Peggy was busy, I wandered off and I oh, went this to see a lamp. rugged cape. Oh, I love it. I don't think I'd ever have the patience to knit it, but oh, it's so, so nice. So nice. The book is so gorgeous. So I bought a skein of Olan because why not? You have to. Well, it was hard to get your hands on, so when you see it. Oh, it was so hard to choose. But I think if you're drawn to something, you're drawn to it, aren't you? So this one's called Quarry. I love her little labels. Teeny tiny. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, it's so stunning. Oh my god. How pretty does she look? Oh, I know, she's gorgeous. Oh. This was so funny. When Mum and Claire were going to um, meet Hohe, Dad looked uh, looked up the night before he was on his iPad and he went, So is Vera Valamaki going to be there as well? <laughs> like, oh my god, we've brainwashed Dad. <laughs> this is so funny. It's so funny. He knows all their names. <laughs> Oh, oh, bless him. <laughs> it's really funny if we get some yarn orders in and Dan was here once he saw a name. He said it was Nicola Carriage. He went, Oh Nicola, she's got a podcast, hasn't she? <laughs> so funny. Dan knows about blocking as well. He's he like, does. Are you gonna block that? <laughs> <laughs> he is funny. He's funny. Oh, and wow. then had to get this. <gasps> you should eat her. And she just had all singles there. It was just, and this is the bath retreat. Ah, 2018 this is oh. the limited edition look those colors go really nicely together they do look. they could be friends or something i just i just have yeah. to you know squish for a little special while ones, aren't they? um yeah i this is number five now olan <laughs> god i've only had two we were bad well when we went to our you mouthful i just kept back going back way. i kept going back kept going back it was so gorgeous look at the green wow do you know oh, awesome so it was really that was lovely it was very lovely i was tempted to buy lots of shibui as well but um nah just slightly out of my price range and also shibui is not exciting is it it's, it's not plain colors. <laughs> plain colors but just to have it in your hand you know <laughs> My only other acquisition this month is some Chai Goo Twist needles. Ooh, I, um, let me know. Well, I've been kind of struggling with like cable lengths mm. for small things. When I was knitting that little jumper, mm. I had a 60 centimetre. It was just a little mm. bit too long to knit in the rain, so I had to go onto an 80 and do magic leap. Mm. And I just thought, what I actually need is a shorter one, but mm. I've, I've done this wrong. I, the, uh. I ordered the 20 centimetre cable. Uh. With the ten centimetre yeah. tips, which should make a forty. Yeah, but it's it does not, not long enough. Pretty. No, it doesn't. You no, know, it does make a forty, does doesn't it? it? No, I think it's. There's one company that does them. No, I thought with this it was. Oh right. It was the the total of the individual um, bits because that's twenty centimetres. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, but it'd be fine for hats. I've got three point seven five tips. Okay. So, oh, let me know how you get on. Yeah, I'm going to try it out because I am really tempted to get a, <clears> a, a set. set. Yeah, I'm quite tempted because I love chogus. I've got loads of fixed mm. ones, but I think mm. it would be good, especially with the shorter tips. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I've got the 10 centimetre tips and the 3.75. Mm. Got them from Pearlescence, who are absolutely yeah. oh, fab. I, them. I think I ordered them. <clears throat> Where did I order them? It was like late Friday night and they came Saturday morning or something like that. Amazing. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was really quick. Yeah, I've ordered from them. They're really, really good. Yeah. Excellent. Done. So my last bit is just some fabric. Oh, that's nice. It's just, um, just caught my eye. I've got a bikini in that. Very similar you have. Yeah. Yeah, right. I should make you a beach cover up. Um, <laughs> not that you're going for all the beaches beach. I never go on. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was a lot less expensive than the 
put on in steel. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty. So that might. I'm, I've got my canvas set. So I made a dress last time, the grey spotty dress that I showed, and it's got a top pattern to go with it. So I might just make like a t shirty. You know the dress you gave me last time? Mm. It made me a T-Rex it too. <laughs> it's just really tight right now. I've yeah. got, I used to be an Irish dancer, so my arms are like string because they never mm. got used. And they were so tight around my arms. I thought, if they're tight around my mm. arms, they're not going to fit anybody. No. Oh, I don't, it's such pattern. a weird pattern. It was a free pattern, yeah. unfortunately, so I can't even complain about it. But yes, so sewing plans, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You know, so we're done. Hand over to John. We shall. See you later. <laughs> this was back to me for a short section this month uh, just to show you some of the yarns we've been dying up and to give you another top tip for photography for taking your own great images. So for me the colorways I started off working on at the beginning of the month were repeating some old favorites. So we came up with the bear hunt again or we're all going on a bear hunt which was part of the children's book series. I've got some really lovely colorways that I'm sure will be coming back again pretty soon from that series. Um, after that, started working on the yarn club and came up with this yarn, which I'm absolutely delighted with. It's a pale sort of turquoise blue base, and it's really beautifully speckled with navy blues, browns, and the sort of gold colour as well. A bit reminiscent of a, a bird's eggs in the bird box. Therefore, the name for this one was Arithicus ubecula, which, if I've pronounced it right, is the Latin name for the robin. Uh, thanks for all the feedback on this one. It's really good to see how much you all enjoyed this month's Yarn Club. Do look out for the next one. Um, we've been dyeing up all the test dyes, and they're looking fantastic. We've just got a few days left to sign up for this as the Yarn Club finishes on the 3rd of June when I'll be dyeing up this month's batch ready to send out later on in the month. So after the Yarn Club, I um, started working on a beautiful neutral colourway which is called the Urban Fox. I'm going to have to just show you pictures of this because there's actually none left in the shop at the moment. They will be returning again. This is a colourway I absolutely love dyeing up. So we've got again the Aztec Golds, the russet colours that represent the fox and then the greys and some lovely blues as well for that kind of nocturnal nighttime feel to it. So that was the urban fox. Thanks again for the comments and the feedback we've had on that one. After that we started a bit of a Bristolian themed series. Um, a number of you have commented on some of the Bristolian phrases or the way that we speak in some of the podcasts so we thought well we may as well make the most of that and we've come back to doing some research research in some traditional Bristolian phrases and out of those came up some beautiful yarns so this one is called write me lover and write me lover is one of my favorites for a long time actually it's a beautiful pale green base it's got some really bright greens in there as well and then so the accent is with the pinks and it's speckled with the same kind of colours. So again the pinks, the greens and it's just a beautiful colourway. I think this will look fantastic when it's knitted up. Bits of burgundy on there as well. So that one is Write Me Lover. And then the next one that's still in the shop, just one or two skeins left, is called Gert Lush. And Gert Lush means something that looks absolutely amazing and I really think this does. So this really is Gert Lush. And as you can see, we've got a sort of pale pink base. It's just really heavily speckled. And we've got the pinks, the greens, different range of green tones. And I absolutely love the greens on the end of this skein. Just look at that how beautiful that combination is together. So that one is called Gert Lush. And then the other thing for us, I was absolutely delighted this month with the feedback from Hohi Locatelli. Um, Claire's idol, she was absolutely over the moon when she met her and when we saw that she mentioned some of our yarn in her podcast and uh, really loved the gift that Claire had given her, I was absolutely delighted with that. So for Hohi, thank you very much for the mention. And Just Rust is definitely one of our 
sort of go-to's. It's the, one of our all-time favourites and we do keep repeating this one every now and then. So Just Rust is on this beautiful grey base and it's speckled with some deep dark blues, some browns, a whole range of brown tones and the golds as well. Again, loving the speckling on this one and this is Just Rust. Now at the moment we've stopped dyeing this one up but we have got some pre-orders in the shop. Um, sent off a whole batch of them only yesterday and if you place a pre-order it should be with you within one to two weeks. So that is Just Rust. And that's about it for the yarns we've been dyeing up for this month apart from all the test dyes that I've been doing to get ready for this month's yarn club that as I said closes on the 3rd of June so do sign up for that one if you want to join in. It's £20 to sign up for the Yarn Club and you will get one of our beautiful skeins plus you'll get some other goodies thrown in as well um, all on the same kind of theme. The Unsprung Yarn Club is what you're looking out for and it's all based upon the wildlife, the flora and fauna of British wildlife in springtime so hope you enjoy the June one, which is the last of the three month series of the Yarn Club, so look out for that. Okay, so time for some short top tips for photography. Um, you know, in the first one of this series, I talked a bit about leading lines, about looking for something in the image that just draws the eye through to the main point of interest. Um, the second one, we talked a bit about composition. I spoke about the rule of thirds, where you can split an image up into thirds, both vertically and horizontally. And then if you want to um, draw the eye in, it's good to put whatever it is that is the main point somewhere on that rule of thirds over here. Um, the third top tip for today is actually all about the depth of field. So for depth of field, I'm talking about whether something is in focus right the way through from front to back of your image, or whether you start off with one point of your subject being sharp and in focus and then let everything else drop out of focus and become blurred. So if I'm taking landscape images, I try to make sure that most of the images are sharp right the way through from front to back, unless I choose to do something deliberately different to that. If I'm taking portraits or macro shots, um, images of yarn and so on, then I want to make sure that what your focus is, your subject is sharp, and then everything else starts to drop out of focus to draw your eye towards your main subject. So that's about depth of field. If it's sharp from front to back, that's called a large depth of field. If it's sharp in one place and then becomes blurred very quickly, you've got a shallow depth of field. So how to create that? Well, this is a little bit difficult to explain, but inside a digital SLR camera, you'll find that you can open up um, the hole, the aperture, that creates how much light is coming into the camera, or you can close that down. And you do that using the A, and that's the F stops on your camera. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing because the smaller the number, the bigger the hole. So if I start off with an f1.8, it means I've got a big hole which is allowing a lot of light into the camera. If I do that, then it means that there's a really shallow depth of field. So something is sharp, close towards me, or whatever I focus on, and then a small distance away from that is going to drop out of focus. If you have a big number, like an f22 or an f16, that's actually a really small aperture. It's allowing a little bit of light into the camera and that creates a much bigger depth of field. So for the landscape photography, f16, f22 means that you've got it sharp, close to you right the way through to infinity and things off in the distance. Now that's okay if you're taking photographs with a digital SLR, but if you're doing it with just your phone, it's a bit difficult to create that kind of shallow depth of field where something is sharp and then everything else becomes blurred behind it. So on the most recent cameras, you'll find they end up with two cameras. And what they're doing is they're actually taking two images, one which is sharp, one which is blurred, merging the two together and it creates a kind of a, a mock version of that shallow depth of field. But for those of us that don't have the latest, most up-to-date phones, um, we have to find ways around that. So if I was using my phone to take a photograph of something, say the yarn, then you can see that if I move the yarn towards the image, I find that yarn is now nice and sharp and I've dropped out of focus, so we created a shallow depth of field. Now we can do the same kind of thing with our phones 
by actually taking the phone towards the image. So making sure that it's as close to the image as you can get. Focusing on the image itself or the subject itself and making sure that there's a good distance between the subject and everything else that's behind it. If we do that, we should then end up with the subject being sharp and everything else blurred behind it and a shallow depth of field. So that's something you can do even if you're just using your phone to take images and want to control that depth of field to create a shallow depth of field, something sharp, everything else blurred behind it. That's about it for our top tip for photography for today. Um, I'll think of another one for next month and I hope you enjoy taking your own images, whether it's of your yarn, whether your work's in progress or actually just life as that happens. So that's almost it for my section. Uh, just before I bring the girls back in to finish off today's podcast, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everybody for their support for Bird Street UK. Um, it's so encouraging to see you knitting with our yarn and seeing what you're making with that. I'd love to see it if you can use even more of the hashtag Mr. B's Yarn on Instagram. It'd be great for us to share the works in progress. Um, there's nothing better than actually seeing what we've created knitted up. So thanks so, so much for that. Thanks to all the support, it does mean that the company is continuing to grow. We're just producing more and more yarn all the time. Absolutely loving that. And it does mean that we've got some plans for 2019. So do look out for us, hopefully, at some of the festivals in 2019, where we move from just selling on Etsy to actually attending some of the festivals as well. So Mr. B's Yarn will be going on tour, and we hope to continue growing the company as we hit 2019. So we're all back. Um, we have got a very exciting giveaway. Um, lovely Hannah from um, Yarnia Designs has mm. given us some copies of her pattern. She wants me and Claire yeah. and one for us to give away. Um, so she's given us her new cottage garden socks, which are really pretty. Yeah, they're um, amazing. Really sweet. John they really good. picture maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, they're really lovely, a lovely sort of lacy pattern. Yeah. Um, they're toe up, aren't they? Yes, they are. I'm going to have a go and experiment, see if I can work the pattern top down because I can't yeah, do I can't do that. Um, but yeah, they're really lovely. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, really, so, really kind, so kind of you. Of you. Um, so we were, we're going to ask you if you'd like to win that pattern, if you could leave a comment down there um, and tell us what your favourite flower is. What's yours? What's yours? Oh, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, I love so many. Um, I, I love bluebells, actually. Yeah, yeah. poppies. Yeah, yeah. Really Mine's, love bluebells. Um, probably peonies or ranunculus. Yeah, or, or like good, or lisiantha. <laughs> Very nice. Um, no, I like peony. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one. some in the garden about to bloom. Should we show yeah, that one? Um, we can show that one. Because you did that one, didn't you? I did. This one is lisiantha. Can we hold them for you? And it's, it's okay. I've got okay. it. Um, yeah, it's really pops of pretty. Brown, blue, green. I can't remember what I put on there. That's no, pink. Got a, is so yeah, it's nice lilac. very it's pale pink base on. Oh, yeah, some lilac. There we go. Lysianthus. Oh, and I did it. another one. Lupin. Oh, the lupin. Oh, feeling flowers. Oh, yeah. But we've been watching the Chelsea Flower Show. Oh, yeah. That was inspiration. I love that. Loop, they were saying this year, lupins have overtaken um, the alliums because they've been popular for years and years and years. Yeah. I love an allium. Okay. Um, but the lupins have just looked stunning. So, yeah. I do love your speckles on that one, actually. Yeah, I'm rather Amazing. pleased with those. Yeah, very good. That's what that one is actually based on one I've done before called Clara Pegatty, but only Clara Pegatty owns it. Yeah. Oh. So I've just adjusted it slightly. So it's very exclusive. Like, very exclusive, yeah. Well, actually, talking about exclusive yarns, <laughs> there was a one of a kind that we dyed up. It was a bit of an experiment, and actually loved the speckles on it, but couldn't come up with a name. So we actually thought, well, it just has to be that this ended up being called Spexy Norms. <laughs> and she is called Spex by her nieces and nephews. And like most of my friends. Yeah, yeah she gets called Spex. Because I wear glasses like once in a few weeks. Yeah, she, she so does wear anti glasses occasionally, <laughs> but she's been anti Spex for years. So. And Hannah calls me Speckles. Speckles, Spectacles, yeah. whatever. Spectacular. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. That's the polite <laughs> yeah. names, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's Spe the ones yeah. from broadcast. Yeah. 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 So Spexy Norms it is. Well, it's better than my other nickname, which is Stumpy. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who calls you that. Right, um, 
So that's oh about it for today. Um, we've got a good month coming up and we look forward to a lot more of works in progress and some exciting yarn combinations coming together. So here we go into June and thanks for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Yeah. See, you See you soon. See you soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye.